It is the world's fourth most valuable illegal trade after human trafficking, arms and drugs trade. The illegal wildlife trade that is decimating thousands of elephants, rhinos and other endangered animals each year at a value of about 1.7 trillion shillings, just enough to fund Kenya's budget for a year. For decades, poachers have continued to do what they know best, kill the elephant for what in their eyes are trophies. Mostly we're seeing two types, it's either bow and arrow poaching, um, which still has the same effect, the elephant still dies at the end of it, um, with some very strong poisons um, being used these days. And then also armed poachers coming in carrying AK-47s, G3s. Despite stringent laws that would cost those involved life imprisonment, the illicit business continues. But who are the main perpetrators? Conservationists say that the black market, which due to its unregulated nature, remains a challenge to account for. A long chain of players exists between the killer and the consumer of the end product. And the kingpin is a person who will make sure that there is a system in place to get the animals killed and then supply to him so that he can supply the market. Behind every elephant or rhino killed, there is a kingpin who coordinates the hunting and delivery of elephant tusks and rhino horns. The kingpin then links with the market that could involve different levels of middlemen to rich exporters. A field poacher could be paid anything between 80 and 100 US dollars for killing, equivalent to between 8,000 and 10,000 shillings. Experienced killers, however, could receive a few hundred thousand shillings. For locals in the chain of trade, the sale of a kilo of ivory could earn between 80 and 100 US dollars. An adult elephant's tusks in Kenya could weigh up to 45 kilograms each, a possible 90 kilos for both. I'll tell you the kind of money they have been given locally here. You, you know, they talk of very little money, 100,000 or small money like that. The task is thus chopped into pieces for ease of transportation and to reduce chances of being caught. It is ferried through a country's ports. For Kenya, that would be at high international airports and or the port of Mombasa. So which are the main markets for this illicit ivory? People in China, in Japan, in Vietnam, certain countries especially in, in the eastern countries, and some parts of America as well, and Europe, they have a real appetite for products that are made out of elephant ivory. From there it can either be sold within the Chinese market or Thai market, or it is processed into products that end up finding their way into other countries like USA or UK. Once out of the country, a kilo of ivory could go for at least $1,100. According to Save the Elephant, a pro-elephant organization in Nairobi, in 2014, the raw ivory price in China rose to 2,100 US dollars per kilo. That is more than 20 times the price at source. Upon refinery and processing into final products, the prices escalate differently for different markets and depending on the products. For instance, such an artifact that weighs just 55 grams is priced at 2,300 US dollars, meaning a kilo of ivory could fetch up to $42,000 or 4.2 million shillings by carving such an artifact, assuming no wastage occurs. So the challenge besides actually containing it here is to try and encourage people to demand for the ban in ivory trade because once that demand overseas is gone, then our elephants and rhinos will be able to live peacefully. The security systems of the various ports that can nab any ivory element in cargo could be loadable innovation. However, that poaching continues and retains a demand poses a threat to the country's natural capital as well as the cultural heritage with serious economic and social consequences. Sam Gitukus, Resident TV, Nairobi.